Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning everyone. So, in this video, we are going to continue with 5.2 hydrocarbon alkenes for part D, which will cover the oxidation of alkene, as well as part E, which will cover the unsaturation test for alkene. Alright, so let's look at the learning outcome for the part D of alkene, which is the oxidation of alkene. So, the learning outcome for this one is at the end of the lesson, students should be able to explain or predict the reaction of alkenes with ozone followed by the zinc in water or the ozone followed by the dimethyl sulfide, which is for this one, this reaction which is called ozonolysis reaction. As well as we are going to look into the reactions of alkenes with the potassium permanganate solution. And then we are going to identify the position of double bond through the ozonolysis and the reaction with hot acidified potassium permanganate solution. Alright, now let's look into the oxidation of alkenes. So the first one is the oxidation of alkene where the oxidizing agent used is potassium permanganate solution KMnO4. So there are two conditions for these reactions with KMnO4. The first one is the basic KMnO4 at room temperature or cool temperature. And then we have the hot acidified KMnO4. Okay, so let's look at the first condition which is the basic KMnO4 at room temperature or at cool temperature. Well, the reaction is hydroxylation. Okay, so the alkene to form a diol okay so we have this ethene for example so ethene in the presence of basic KMnO4 aqueous solution at cool temperature it will be it will form ethene 1 2 diol so the double bond here will be broke will, will be uh, uh, broken okay to form two new single bond here and then the new single bond will be bonded with oh so both of the new single bond will be bonded with oh to form a diol okay so this is for the first condition all right now let's look into the second condition for the oxidation of alkene using kmno4 solution so for the oxidation with hot acidified potassium permanganate solution uh, it involves uh, several cases that i would like to explain using different uh, cases so let's look into the first case where we have propene here all right so for the oxidation of alkene using hot acidified potassium permanganate the first thing you need to do is you have to know that the double bond between the carbon carbon double bond should be break into two parts okay all right so now we have part one and part two of the double bond okay so now let's look into the first part of the uh side yang kita dah break tadi okay so the cut side yang belah satu ni the, the first side okay the first part of the side okay this carbon double bond here they consist only one hydrogen also and one alkyl group okay so if there is only one hydrogen present uh, at the side of the carbon double bond it means that the product that will be formed okay from the oxidation of alkene with hot acidified KMnO4 will be carboxylic acid so you will be formed car the carboxylic acid so the part yang you dah potong tadi ni kan the double bond bila uh, bila kita bila kita ada oxidation with hot acidified KMn and KMnO4 dia akan kita tambah oxygen dekat situ and then the hydrogen kita akan tambah OH dekat situ so dia akan form carboxylic acid okay so in this case sebab kita ada dua carbon so this is the ethanoic acid so now let's look into the second part of the carbon double bond yang kita dah pecah tadi so the second part here Okay, so the second part here, we have the carbon double bond with two hydrogen. So, if there is two hydrogens present on the carbon double bond, so the product that will be formed is carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so ingat, kalau kita punya side yang kita potong tu, side yang belah sini, carbon dia, uh, ada satu hydrogen, maka dia akan form carboxylic acid. Kalau dua-dua hydrogen, dia akan form CO2 and water. Okay, so this is for the first case. So now, 
let's look into the second case. Okay, so now kita ada 2 methyl 1 propane. Okay, so 2 methyl 1 propane, so kita ada alkene. So, nampak saja kita ada hot acidified potassium permanganate. Kita akan break this double bond into two parts. Okay, now we have one, part 1 and part 2. Okay, now kita tengok dekat part 1. This carbon double bond here, dia bonded pada alkyl group. So, dua-dua alkyl group, dia ada two carbon change present pada carbon carbon double bond tu. So, dekat sini, produk yang dia akan form adalah ketone. Okey, di mana kita takkan kacau si kita punya alkyl group kita ni. Kita cuma akan add oksigen pada kita punya double bond tadi ni untuk kita form ketone. So, kita akan form two propanone. Okey, and dekat part yang belah the second part uh, of the carbon carbon double bond, both of the carbon is bonded to hydrogen. So, kalau ada dua hydrogen macam biasa, product that will be formed will be carbon dioxide and water. So, we so we will form ketone, water and carbon dioxide. Okay? Alright. So, I like to remind you like if you want to write the condition and the reagent for the oxidation of alkene untuk hot acidified potassium permanganate. So, dekat atas arrow ni mesti kita guna kita letak kita punya reagent. So, in this case, our reagent is acidified KMNO4 aqueous and then kita punya condition kita kita nak hit ok kita nak hit kita punya reagent so di dekat bawah arrow kita tu alright so now kita dah tengok kita punya second case so let's look into the last case sorry yeah so the last case here we have 2 3 dimethyl 2 butene ok now kita nampak saja KMNO4 aqueous acid with uh, heat dekat sini so kita akan break this two bond so kita part one and part two okay but both part here both side dia ada same alkyl group so dua-dua alkyl group so kita tahu kalau dua-dua alkyl group kita punya product yang kita akan form adalah ketone kita akan form ketone okay so dekat sini kita hanya tambah uh, oksigen saja pada kita punya double bond yang kita dah potong tadi so double bond O kat sini double bond O kat sini so, so disebabkan kita punya alkene simetri jadi produk yang kita akan form adalah identical kalau kalau kita punya um, alkene kita tak simetri kita punya kita yang kita akan form tak samalah kan ok nama dia lain ok tapi in this case disebabkan dia simetri jadi kita akan form identical product of ketone Okay, so itu untuk oxidation of alkene with hot acidified potassium permanganate. Ada tiga cases yang awak tengok tadi. So, conclusion yang awak, yang awak boleh dapat. Kalau kita punya carbon double bond kita tu, dia ada, dia hanya ada alkyl group. So, product yang dia akan form adalah ketone. Okay, kalau kita punya uh, side of carbon double bond kita tu, dua-dua ada hydrogen. Product yang kita akan form adalah water and carbon dioxide. And kalau kita punya side of carbon double bond kita tu hanya ada satu hydrogen, product yang kita akan form adalah carboxylic acid. So, please remember that three cases. Alright. So, let's look into the example. Okay. For the uh, oxidation of alkene uh, under hot acidified potassium permanganate solution. Okay, so question 1 asks you, it says here that an unknown alkene with the formula of C7H14 undergoes oxidation with hot acidified potassium permanganate solution to form propanoic acid and butanoic acid. So, what is the structure of this alkene? Okay, so dia bagi tahu you guys dia punya product, so awak kena predict product. Sorry, awak kena predict dia punya reagent, the structural formula of this reagent alkene. So, kita tahu, okay, kita ada propanoic acid dan juga butanoic acid. So, kita tahu untuk dapatkan alkene, kita kena cantumkan balik. Okay, sebab tadi kita, sebab kita tahu, if we undergo oxidation of alkene, kita akan break the double, the carbon-carbon double bond. So, kalau kita nak tahu structure of alkene, kita akan cantumkan balik kita punya double bond kita tu. So, kita akan buang kita punya oksigen dekat sini. So, kita buang semua kita punya oksigen. So, kita akan gabungkan kedua-dua produk. So, kita akan ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbon. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And then double bond pada carbon 3 dan 4. Okay. And then kita ada hydrogen pada carbon 3 dan 4. And the rest kita akan tulis macam biasa. Alright. 
CH2CH2CH3 CH2, CH3. So this is your alkene. So this is your alkene. Okay, campurkan macam biasa. Gabungkan macam biasa. Alright. So itu tadi so that one is for the oxidation of alkene using KMnO4 solution so now we are going to look into the oxidation of alkene but now uh, with different oxidizing agents so we use ozone as our oxidizing agent so the the other name for this reaction is ozonolysis reaction Okay, so ozonolysis reaction is much more simpler than the oxidizing, sorry, than the oxidation reaction with KMnO4. Okay, so for the ozono ozonolysis reaction, okay, the reagent that we use is number one is ozone, number two is zinc in water, or we can uh, change this with dimethyl sulfide CH3. To S. So we can use this also. Okay, so for ozonolysis reaction, okay, sama macam oxidation of alkene with KMnO, uh, hot acidified KMnO4 tadi, kita akan break kita punya carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, tapi sekarang ni, product yang kita akan form hanya ada dua saja. Sama ada kita akan form ketone ataupun kita akan form aldehyde. Okay, kalau kita punya site kita ada dua part kan. Kalau kita punya side part uh, carbon double bond kita tu. Dua-dua alkyl group. So, product yang kita akan form adalah ketone. Okay, so kita contoh dekat sini kita akan form propanol. So, if dekat kita punya side carbon double bond kita tu. Kita ada satu hidrogen ataupun kita ada dua hidrogen. So, kita akan form kita punya aldehyde. Okay, so dua sahaja possibility product yang kita boleh form. Uh, melalui ozonolysis reaction. Okay, sama ada ketone ataupun aldehyde. Kalau side carbon tu dua-dua alkyl, kita akan form ketone. Kalau side carbon tu kita ada satu hidrogen ataupun dua hidrogen, kita akan form aldehyde. Okay. Okay, let's look into the example. Here we have this alkene. Kita nampak kat sini kita ada ozone with dimethyl sulfide. So, kita akan break this point. So, kita akan tambah oksigen pada kita punya double point untuk kita form ketone here. And then this one kita ada satu hidrogen. So, this one is aldehyde. Okay. So, now kita ada cyclopentene. Okay. So, kita ada ozon dan kita ada zinc in water. So, kita tahu ni adalah ozonolysis reaction. So, we are going to break this double bond into two. Okay. So, now bila kita break kita punya ring, dia akan form straight chain. Okay, so kita akan form double bond O kat sini And then kat hujung sini kita akan form double bond O So kita akan form two side of aldehyde Okay, so this is untuk part D Alright, so now we are going to continue with part part E Which covers unsaturation test for alkene Okay Alright, so now let's continue with the last part of alkene Which is part E which we will cover the unsaturation test for alkene. So, in the learning outcome for this part uh, is we are going to explain the unsaturation test for alkenes by Bayer's test and bromine test. Okay. Now, for the unsaturation test of alkene, there are two tests that we are going to look into. The first one is Bayer's test and the second one is bromine test. So, for the bromine test, we have two which is bromine in inert solvent and bromine in water, which this is actually the one that we have covered earlier uh, during part C, okay, the reaction of alkene. So, this is actually the same one as the uh, one in part C, okay. So, uh, now, what is the purpose of unsaturation test? So, the purpose is for us to determine the presence of carbon-carbon double bond so that we can distinguish the alkene from alkene. Alright, now let's look into the first test which is the Bayes test. So this is actually the one that we have learned in part D where we look into the oxidation of alkene using the basic uh, KMnO4. Okay, so this is actually the same. Okay, so for Bayes test, the reagent that we use is the basic dilute KMnO4 under the condition cold or room temperature okay so if uh, there is alkene 
there is a there is the presence of carbon carbon double bond in alkene okay so if we uh undergo the reaction under the basic kmno4 in cold temperature we are going to uh, obtain the diol and the mno2 precipitate so the observation that you are going to uh, obtain from the reaction of alkene with the Bayes uh, solution is that the purple color of KMNO4 decolorized, okay, and the brown precipitate of MNO2 is formed, okay. So this is the symbol for the precipitate form. All right. However, for alkene, since there is no double bond uh, in alkene because it already saturated, so upon the reaction with Bayes uh, reagent, which is a uh, basic KMNO4 in cool temperature, there will be no change. So the observation that we will see is that the purple color of KMNO4 remain unchanged. Okay, so if the question asks you to uh, explain the unsaturation test between alkene and alkene for, uh, for a specific structure, then you can uh, write down this uh, equation as well as, as well as the observation for both alkene and alkene for the respective example to explain the unsaturation test for Bayes test okay so that one is for Bayes test okay for bromine test so or we call it bromination so I did do a condition just like I said just now first one is the bromine in uh, CH2Cl2 okay and then bromine in water okay so now for bromine test okay or if if we use alkene, so since alkene has the carbon-carbon double bond, so it can react with bromine uh, in solvent, uh, sorry, in inert solvent, as well as bromine in water. So, maksudnya, ada reaction dah kulah. Okay, so kalau alkene react in bromine in inert solvent, so both of the, so the double bond will be broken and form into two new single bonds, so they akan attach dua-dua bromine dekat sini. Okay, but kalau untuk bromine in water, so bromine from uh, one bromine from bromine molecule and OH from water will be attached to the two new single point. Okay, kat sini. Okay, according to Markov Nikov lah. Okay, so this is actually uh, just want to show you lah that the kalau untuk alkene reaction dengan bromine. Okay, akan ada bagi product lah. So, the observation that you can see is that the reddish brown color of bromine will decolorize. Okay, so kalau alkene, since dia tak ada double bond, so bromine kita tak boleh nak undergo electrophilic addition okay, dengan alkene. So, dia tak akan berlaku apa-apa perubahan. So, no change. Okay, so observation you will see that the reddish brown color of bromine remain unchanged. Alright, so... That is all for the part E. Okay, so part E ni basically just uh, explain the unsaturation test. Okay? So if question asks you to describe or to explain the unsaturation test to differentiate between alkene and alkene, so these are the two tests that you can write. So first one is Bayes test using the dilute basic KMNO4 in cold temperature. Second one is bromine test where we use bromine in inert solvent or bromine in water. Okay, so kalau alkene adalah produknya. Kalau alkene tiada produk. So kalau alkene, observation dia kalau untuk uh, KMN, uh, untuk basic KMN, KMNO4, dia dia punya purple color decolorize. Okay, dia dia akan form MNO2 precipitate. Kalau untuk bromine test, dia kalau untuk alkene, reddish brown color of bromine akan decolorize. Okay, so I think that is all for today's video. So we have done cover everything on our kin so we are going to uh, discuss the tutorial question in our next video so with that thank you and assalamualaikum bye bye